November and men's mental health in the conversation this month. And I've been in conversation with some of my other BFBS presenters, Tom Payne, Mark McKenzie and Dom Atkins. One of the big things that we've been talking about is our work-life balance how that affects us every day. After however many years, Mark, in this industry, I mean, is, is there a balance? No, no, there's not. But the thing is that my work is my hobby. Uh, and this sounds like I'm speaking to my family as I justify me sitting, <laughs> uh, editing something on a, on a Sunday on my day off, you know. But it is. It, it's a hobby. I'm not, going, I'm not going fishing. I'm not going to watch football matches or whatever. Um, but I love, love, love the diversity that BFBS has brought us, whether it's on radio or whether it's doing social media, all all of that. So could I spend more time with my family? My home life is uh, at points complicated because my son has uh, severely a uh, complex special needs, additional needs. So that adds a whole bag of frogs. And that's exactly what it is. It's very difficult for me to plan anything. There's never a blueprint, is there? Like I feel like I'm in this Great, and, and it's self maybe a self imposed grey area, right? As a, as I have a young family, um, with my partner and our young kids, and again, Mark, you're saying my boy's just been diagnosed with ADHD, and you're trying to navigate. Like I want to be the best Curtis at work, and then I want to come home and I want to be the best dad, and then I want to go out and be the best me and continue playing football, like I, like play PGA go <laughs> like I want to play pro golf. <laughs> I want to be able to sit and have an hour on on a PlayStation with with a couple of lads that, that do that. And I want to be the best at everything. And sometimes it just feels like I'm in this grey area where I can't please everyone. And I really want to please everyone and I just can't do it. I find my work life balance is shocking. And I, I haven't I haven't got a family, I haven't got like a, a wife or a girlfriend or kids or anything like that because I'm I'm too young to be having that. But oh, like, he, like he my, keeps doing it. My, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I promise. But my, I will often find like on a Sunday, Sunday around four o'clock ish, I'll, I'll open back up my work laptop, and that'll just be because I care so much about what it is I'm doing, whether it's at work or it's my personal life or stuff like that, that I can't help but not not do some stuff on that. But I, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing or if it's. Or if it's just dedication, you know. We're joking here about age and time. And uh, time is something um, that is a recurring thing in my my life. And um, again, it was something my dad said when he retired, which was watch time because it's sneaky. It just mm. goes. It's those seconds. You know, it's the wasted moments. And um, I think we all need to make the most of what we've got and you, you need to be happy as well and then yeah. for that to happen there has to be an element of selfishness uh, because only you can decide what makes you happy nobody people can give you a list of things that are going to make you happy but only you know whether that's what's making you happy or not you know is it is it family is it having a nice car is it having a mullet is it you, any or any of that it's up to you to decide and find out and you won't do that first time you'll make mistakes uh, as, as we all have and will continue to do uh, but um, that so that life balance, when we talk about life balance, and people instantly think, oh, hey, well, life is family. It's not. It's it's everything. Out with what happens when you're away, away from work. And as I say, my excuse is that my uh, hobby, which would be part of my life, is also my job. And as somebody who was nine years old, what feels like a blink of an eye ago, Tom, and that's the warning that I'm giving you here as a as a friend, is that that just goes, you know, nine years old, I wanted to be on the radio. Here I am still doing it. It's not been playing sailing by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but God, what a lucky, what a lucky guy I am to be able to, to say that I'm here and I'm doing that. I think as well, you mentioned it's not about family, but, but family comes with its own problems. And mm. like you say, Curtis, with kids, you want to do your best for the kids. Um, but also... You know, your partner as well is part of this. And she didn't ask to be married to someone who's thinking all the time about this stupid link he's going to do off the back of Katy Perry tomorrow morning at 10 past eight. <laughs> you know, she didn't sign up for that. My, but the thing is, it works both ways. And and you need to, when it comes to the family side of things and, and taking your work home with you, you need to understand that they're doing the same balancing act as well. My wife, mm. so she's an actress. Uh, she She's up in Glasgow rehearsing for a, and recording a, and filming some stuff for a, a show she's about to go out on next year. And then when she gets back, we've got three weeks to try and sort out our new house. And by the way, we moved. Um, we've got three weeks to sort out our new house before she goes off to do panto for, for eight weeks. 
So you literally, she, she's doing the same vanishing acts that, that I do, only her one's sort of taking her in a different direction. So trying to balance life up isn't just about you, it's about everybody. And at the end of the day, it's all about coming to sort of working out what works best for you. Um, so work-life balance isn't just about you and your work, it's about everything else that's around you. These challenges start really, you know, my daughter, 12, uh, Sophie, who's 12, has just started high school. Every day she comes home and uh, she'll sit for 20 minutes round the table talking about all the challenges that she's had at school and all the nice things that have happened and the difficult things that have happened. So it it starts, at, you know, I think it starts before we even realise that we're yeah. trying to get, I, I mean, for me, the balance is that my son is, is non-verbal. The irony of that for a dad that talks non-stop is, is incredible. So uh, my son Murray can't, can't speak. My daughter can't shut up. And, and I've got, <laughs> she's listening. But it, it, it's trying to find that patience on my part that can talk, you know, can, can understand that she's got to let go as well of what she wants to say and, and listen and not think, oh, God, you know? I find a lot of guilt weighed in as well. Like, I feel guilty to everybody like if i if i'm chipping off from work early in a day because i've got a commitment to go and and do something with my family i feel guilty on behalf of that i'm not working hard enough if i spend an extra hour at work doing something so that i'm polishing the show up or that i'm doing something then i feel guilty that i'm not at home and if i'm doing both of those things as best as i can and i've not managed to go out and have a round of golf or get to football training this week i feel guilty because i'm not looking after myself and like guilt weighs so heavily, I think, and it's such a a deep hole that you really have to look after yourself and and actually sometimes say just don't care as much. Like it's only radio, it's only there's another day, it's only it's only football, it's only golf, it's only like there there will be another day, and and I can't help it. Like for example, Mark, I don't know, I don't know if you feel this, but like I feel like if I have to have a day off because my boy's got an appointment to do with his ADHD or something. I feel like I maybe ask for a day off too many or if, if somebody's had a day off that week already and I, and I should be picking up the slack. But actually, I, I need to go and be there for him and be there for my yeah. family. I feel guilty that I'm leaving work in, in, the, in yeah. the stress. I think we'll all agree that we work for a, a, a company that takes uh, well-being and family very, very seriously. And I think that's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's really important. And, I, and of all the people on this call, I'm probably the one that has had that most in that, uh, you know, I um, and people ask me all the time uh, how my son is. And every time I say he's doing all right, he proves me wrong. Uh, and we can end up in hospital for 10 days. You know, sometimes on... A, 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 he, he sleeps with oxygen at night. He does... Uh, all of that we we have nights where we don't don't sleep at all so you come into work and you are just not not functioning uh, and I uh, try to work out you know do I take leave do I and often I, it can be a Saturday morning I can be on Saturday sport and I'll get a phone call maybe he's been at respite uh, and he's been taken into hospital so then you're going in there and you're thinking at what point do I call in here to say that I can't yeah. do the show uh, as, as I say I think we're really really lucky in that we work for an organization that that gets that and understands that but that does not and it never will take away that guilt because that's the type of person you are you know i think and we've all worked with people as well who won't mind doing that who won't open the laptop on a sad on a sunday to do that little bit of extra work and that, so the, 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 there's lots of different types of people that and they're not not better or worse they're just different and that's the that's the hard bit sometimes, isn't it? And, and with the with the uh, the guilt that you were saying, Curtis, I mean, actually, a conversation, communication, actually mm -hmm. helps with that, because actually, if you're you are worried about all this stuff and you're you're holding it all up and you're you're thinking, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to... actually sit down and have a conversation with the person involved, because actually, nine times out of ten, they completely understand, and although they won't take the guilt away, what they will do is they will then be aware that you are feeling that and actually sort of they won't it won't be so bad all over you know what i mean it kind of smooths the edges a little bit